And now we have a real life fairy tale for you. 10 years ago, our next guest stood in front of Buckingham Palace waving a, a daffodil at William and Kate. Now, flowers are being thrown at her for her portrayal of Princess Diana in The Crown. It is on Netflix now. Please welcome Emma Corrin. Hi, Emma. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Emma. Yeah, I'm have good. You, have you done a video chat with a studio audience before? <laughs> no, not no. with a live studio audience. So well, say hello to everybody. There they are, and they're... <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit weird, but uh, thank you for... I know it's late where you are. You're in London, right? Yeah, I'm in London. It's 1 a.m. 1 a.m. Do you yeah. usually stay up this late? <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm, like, notoriously bad at staying up late. So it's, like, 10.30, and I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> Your dress looks dangerous. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I... <laughs> I like thought 1am, you know, I might as well break the studs out. But, Jimmy, I have got my slippers on as well. Oh, you got... <laughs> and, you know, go really well. You know, the dress is... <laughs> it's practical, too, because if you were to nod off, you'd get poked and you'd wake right back up, probably. Honestly, I was doing this early. I haven't got much range of motion, really. It's sort of like, you know? <laughs> and... You got enough. You know, I mentioned in your intro that you were, um, you were like, uh, well, you, you know the story. You were outside the royal <laughs> wedding, like, as, as in the group, uh, in the sea of people who were there to celebrate and see it, which is, well, I mean, that's got to, you must have thought about that when you got this <laughs> role. Yeah, kind of insane. Also, because I hadn't really been a massive, like, royal family person before that, but I just remember... 10 years ago, I must have been, yeah, I was 15. That's maths. And um, I was with my friend Catherine. And we got very, very swept up in the royal wedding fever. I think probably because we were incredibly bored and incredibly single. <laughs> and um, so we decided to go. But we also decided the night before that we would... Um, we, I mean, we stayed up quite late and we went out in our pyjamas. And we went to the supermarket and we bought the DVD that they made of the William and Kate love story, the one that they make with, like, the really bad acting. I'm so sorry. Oh, really? Oh, um, like one yeah. of those uh, whipped out, kind of made-for-television deals? Yeah, yeah, one of I... those ones, which is so bad that it's so good. Oh. Like, phenomenal. And um, I remember we watched that and we were just, like, so in it. And the next day we got the train and we stood on the mall with everyone else and... Um, I remember we were so excited because my friend Catherine um, had this huge inflatable daffodil because she's from Wales. And um, I think that's a Welsh thing. Otherwise, I've just yeah, made it up. <laughs> she had this huge <laughs> inflatable daffodil. And I remember that when we were watching the footage back to see if we could like get a glimpse of it, like ourselves, we couldn't see ourselves at all, but we did see in the middle of these crowds this massive inflatable daffodil <laughs> that she was holding up wow. and waving. The daffodil uh, went on to become very famous, I guess. And it, when you, speaking of very so famous, you, when you take on a role like this, this was your first big role out of college, right? Yeah, yeah. Does it hit you that you're playing somebody that everybody knows? Uh, very, very well. And I would imagine that your reaction is, I would better learn every possible thing about this person. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was at first sort of like, I wanted to sort of bury myself under a carpet for a long time and sort of process <laughs> it, and that still hasn't really happened. Um, and then, yeah, I sort of just tried to absorb as much information, like a sort of sponge, as I could. And then, yeah, and then I guess the main... But to be honest, the person who helped me the most with this was my mum, because um, she's a speech therapist, and so I just realised I said that wrong. Speech therapist. She's a, she's a... You might have to go I'm for I'm sorry, Mum. I'm sorry. It's 1 a.m. Well, you, you couldn't pick any two words to... Uh... I just this one, like, she's... she's it's like misspelling therapist. the word misspell, you know? Right? <laughs> yeah. She's a speech therapist, and um, she uh, was amazing and helped me with my auditions when I was prepping for them. And oh, so she, she analyzed Diana, and she uh, would give you tips, or would she do it herself? How would it work? She would give me tips on the voice initially before I started working with William Conacher, who was the main um, voice and dialect coach I worked with. Um, yeah, my mom would help me, and so we'd sit in this little cafe near where I lived at that time, and. 
we just, yeah, go through the like sides that I was given and she would help me do the voice and say, well, you know, she speaks with this kind of lilt at the end of her voice and that, it was very sweet. Now that you are obviously associated with Princess Diana, do, have you learned, th do people tell you things about her, things that are, are not commonly known? Yeah, I mean, I do worry sometimes that this is something that's going to follow me for the rest of my life. This sort of thing that no matter where I go, and it happens especially at, like, family gatherings or when I'm with, like, yeah, friends of friends, especially, like, older people, I guess <laughs> you were, like, around in her time, <laughs> um, then <laughs> that they all have a story and they're all, like, they all assume that I'm very much interested in their Diana stories, which I guess I am, but, you know, to a certain extent. Well, it and, depends um, on the story, I guess. Like, what kind of stories... Depends on the story. They all tend to be the same, which is kind of insane, but I promise you it's true. It's always the thing where they're like, oh, I actually have a... Well, I, it's, I have a Diana story, which is that... Um, so I was, uh, you know, it was my... Well, it was actually my sister's best friend's roommate, and... Um, she was like once sitting next to Diana at a dinner and it's always that kind of thing it's always like two people were moved and they were sitting next to her at a dinner or that they like shook her hand once when she was passing somewhere and it's always the same thing but it's phenomenal like a, almost like 90 percent of people I meet have a Diana story so I should not tell you the story of when I was in London <laughs> and she was in the theater and everybody started gathering around and I yeah. said, why is everybody gathering around? They said, Diana's in there. And then I said, I'm gonna no. go have about 10 beers. And then I did. And then I stumbled back and then she walked out with Prince Charles. No, but wait, what did you do when she, did you talk to her? Oh no, I was just in the crowd looking at her. I, you know, there was, yeah. Yeah, there was, I was, you know, I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> So don't tell that story. I shouldn't share that story with you is what I'm saying. Absolutely not. I can't believe you did. So no, this that's one... actually quite a good one. Oh, thank you. Well, you're very nice to say that, but I can tell that you're lying. Yes, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Emma, you're great in the show, it's, uh, it, and it's a great show. It's The Crown. All four seasons are on Netflix now. Emma Corrin, thanks for staying up late, Emma. And we're back with 17. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel, and this is The Internet. I made it myself. Hit subscribe if you like it.